Hey friends, it's Brecky and this is Sustainable Prepping, a fear-free emergency preparedness community for normal people. Today I'm talking about the difference between go bags and bug out bags. Now I know a lot of people use go bags and bug out bags or bobs interchangeably, but I do think there are some very particular differences between go bags and bug out bags that I wanted to talk about in today's video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel so I can bring you more fear-free emergency preparedness. Also, don't forget to check out sustainableprepping.com where I have a free top 10 checklist for planning your evacuation kit. That is totally free over on the blog sustainableprepping.com. All the info is down below for you. So I'm gonna look at four ways in which bug out bags and go bags are different. Okay, the first main difference is that bug out bags are designed for rough terrain survival and a go bag is designed for more urbanized or more developed terrain survival. So what that means is that a bug out bag or a bob is really focused on having everything you need to pack out on foot and basically through hike or through camp until you can get to your secondary location, your bug out location. These are designed for people to cross fields or forests. They are designed to be carried on foot and they are designed to help a person or a small team make it from point A to point B going backcountry. Go bags, on the other hand, are designed primarily to be for folks who are heading out in the car, who maybe will walk a shorter distance, right? We're talking about maybe two, three miles of walking, probably paved or gravel walking. And that person has a predetermined, fairly urbanized, location that they're going to be going to. These are probably going to be more popular in urban and suburban areas where the likelihood of you even having access to rough live off the land terrain is much slim slimmer than those survivalist type bags that are going to be more popular in more rural settings. Now this kind of bob is going to have really particular gear to help the survivalists live off the land. Usually it's about three days worth of food and water plus water filtration and camps stoves and other items that are particular to rough terrain travel, camping, and survival. A go bag is going to have more particular gear that is designed for things like water filtration and food, of course, but more personal care items, more probably water purification items, lots of maps, and things that are going to help someone in a more urbanized setting that isn't planning on roughing it. These are really more about getting in your car at a moment's notice, not hiking out into the backwoods at a moment's notice. Okay, the second major difference between a bug out bag and a go bag is that bug out bags are built on highly specialized gear, where go bags tend to be built on everyday gear with maybe one or two specialized pieces. So what I mean by that is that a bug out bag is going to have gear that is really designed for preppers and survivalists or through hikers if you're someone who's hiked the Appalachian Trail. We're gonna have things like highly contained and efficient camp stoves. You're going to have things like GPS trackers or ham radios if you're into the communication side of things. You're going to have special fire starters and uh, solar charging panels. You may even have special clothing that is designed for rough survival. In addition, you'll often find things like paracord and mylar uh, space blankets that can be used as tarps. Everything will be uh, focused on having the right gear uh, for weight and for survival so that you can be rough on the land for as long as it will take you to get to your bug out location. Now, preppers can spend hundreds and thousands of dollars acquiring gear, right? Acquiring gunshot wound kits and requiring snake venom kits and everything that they may need for their particular terrain that they plan on being in. A go bag, on the other hand, is really designed to incorporate items you would already have and already be using with one or two intentional pieces to make your bag more efficient and effective. Now, these specialty items would be things like having one solar charger for your cell phone, for example, or having a water purification system or having solar powered lighting. These particular items that aren't necessarily everyday items are 
the the sort of highlights of a go bag rather than the bones of a go bag if that makes sense a go bag is going to have things like baby wipes and toiletries and a change of clothes particularly of undergarments it's going to have soap and toothbrushes it's going to have quick snacks like granola bars as well as potentially having something like a mountain house foods freeze-dried meal these are all, for the most part, things you can pick up at your local grocery store or hardware store with one or two specialty ordered items that you can get online. Because bug out bags and go bags are sort of designed with a different end in mind, they are filled with different gear. The third major difference is that most go bags, in my experience, are designed to work in tandem with a car kit. So for example, my go bag doesn't have a full med kit. I have a small one that includes gauze and band-aids, neosporin, and medical tape plus gloves and a mask but in my car I have a full metal lock box that is a much more robust first aid kit I don't feel the need to repeat that first aid kit in my go bag because the likelihood that I won't be going in my car as my escape route is very very slim now even though I live rurally in a very small town the likelihood that I'm going to pack out on my feet all of my gear to survive for any length of time honestly is pretty slim my husband has collapsed discs in his bag I have two very small children and we're just not going to make it very far like that's just something that we have accepted we need our car as a way of getting out of Dodge and we have planned accordingly to have a car kit that can work in tandem with our go bags this includes a robust first aid kit and a kit that has things like ponchos headlamps extra batteries extra charging equipment snacks and things like that that lives in the car all the time so if we're ever in a situation where we are away from home Home and we don't have our go bags but we need to stay away from home we already have some essential items in the car that can help act as a stopgap until we can either pick up new items or get home to retrieve our go bags and other gear. Now a bug out bag does not depend on a car because most people who are planning to bug out often are planning to bug out whether or not they have a vehicle and so that's important okay the fourth difference is that a go bag is highly adaptable to lots of emergencies because it is lighter because it is filled with items that you have from around the house you can adapt it every season you can adapt it multiple times a year adding in this and taking out that as needed in fact is my recommendation that you at least go through your go bags every single year it needs to be an annual rotation if not a seasonal rotation for most people. Because go bags aren't trying to be your end all and be all of survival, they can have different focuses. So for example, if you're packing a go bag for a small child, you may not be asking them to carry all of their nutritional needs for three or four days and instead will have space for something like a lovey or a little game that will offer them comfort in the face of a very uncertain transition in time. So go bags can be highly nuanced and they can be changeable because again, they're focused on everyday items that you are already using that you're already familiar with that you could quickly add in and take out. A bug out bag, because it's so highly specialized and it depends on you carrying out everything has to be hyper efficient because you can't carry extra weight. Most of us are not in shape enough to carry extra weight. So anything that is not hyper efficient usually is left out, which makes them a little bit less flexible. Again, a go bag is more flexible because it doesn't need to be hyper efficient because the whole point of a go bag is that you're just getting from point A to point B, likely in a car or other vehicle. Go bags are also just more accessible to those of us with average or less than average strength and stamina. I know that since my pregnancy was so challenging, my body is still recovering over a year later and I just can't carry the same amount of weight that I could before I got pregnant. So my go bag is lighter now than it used to be because I know that I will just be dumping things if it's too heavy. And that's the beauty of a go bag. That flexibility allows me to add things in as I need to, as I have better stamina going forward. Really at the end of the day, the major difference is what your end goal is. If you are planning on bugging out through the deep woods or high desert to get to your bug out location, you're gonna want a more bug out bag, you know, Bob style emergency travel gear. You're gonna want all that highly focused prepper gear. You're gonna want all those highly specialized items. And and that's gonna help you survive rough terrain until you get to your secondary location. 
if you're someone like me that is not planning on hiking through any forests anytime soon, except for recreation, you are not going to need all that specialized gear. And so a flexible lighter bag is really going to meet my family's needs for 98% of the emergencies that we're going to be facing. For us, if we're having to evacuate quickly, we're going to be going to a friend's farm, or we're going to be going to a hotel, or we're going to be going to my in-laws. We're not going to be going out to the backwoods. So that that have knowing what our end is going to be that our end goal is going to be a civilized you know a, an area with lighting and water and all of that means that we pack differently than someone whose end goal is two or three or four days of backwoods travel to get to their bug out location the most important thing you should take away from this comparison is that the end goal is needs to be how you design your bag if your end goal is going to be a bug out location that's quite remote you need to build a bag that will get you there if your end goal is hotel, evacuation camp, best friend's house that's 20 miles away, you need to build a bag that will get you there. You also have to take into consideration cost, specialized gear is going to cost more than everyday items, and your personal fitness. Don't go designing a 50 pound bag if you can barely carry 25 pounds. That's not going to actually get you anywhere. So all of these things will help you design your own bag. Know that you can be flexible. Something is better than nothing. Done is better than perfect. Get a bag together, even if it's just a few water bottles and some granola bars and a clean pair of wool blend socks. I promise you, having something prepared for an emergency is so much better than having nothing, even if that something isn't perfect. Friends, I hope that you are well. Again, don't forget to visit sustainableprepping.com to pick up your free evacuation top 10 checklist. And don't forget to like this video to let me know that you want more of this kind of content. Comment down below with any questions you have about go bags versus bug out bags. I personally have go bags but I have some interest in bug out bags eventually but right now we're totally focused on go bags and car kits and working in tandem and all of that let me know what questions are burning in your soul I'm happy to share all of my emergency preparedness information with y'all friends I hope you are doing well and staying safe and I will see you all very soon bye